You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come under the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny begins. Well, bless the Lord. This is Dr. McLeod, and you've tuned in today to Stomping Out Biblical Illiteracy with the Task Force. <laughs> we're excited to be here with you, and we have an awesome pace that we're going to be um, uh, cooperating with because we want to make sure as master teachers and those who are devoted to the master teaching anointing, the master teaching mantle, is that we ensure your growth in the Word of God. So we're going to remain very cognizant of our pace because uh, we want to execute the master teaching principles of, of teaching under a Godmosphere and teaching under uh, by a God pace. And that pace is conducive to your learning. That pace is conducive to you getting it. And so, again, one of the principles that we'll be using is the law of repetition. So as a, as a master teaching principle, we're going to ensure that you hear it and you hear it not only with your natural ability to hear, but also with your intellect and then also with your human spirit, your inner ear. So stand by. You've tuned in to Bible College on television. Come on, give God a great big hand of applause. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, we have a lesson planned for you guys today, so we want you to take copious notes. Hopefully you have your pen and paper, okay, because you have to ink what you think, right? You got to put it down so it could be found, right, so that at some point you have to sprint with the blueprint. But you have to put it down, my friend. Remember one of the main uh, principles of a scholar is to document, 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 document. Because whatever God spoke to you 10 years ago is still yay, yay, and amen. And you're looking for new directions. You're looking for a new directive from the Lord. But God is saying, what did you do with that which I've already given you? So you need to be, you need to be revisiting uh, the directives, the instructions that he's given you in times past. And now it's important for you to start documenting those things that you hear. Now remember, I'm going to be as a spokesman speaking some things into your ear gate. It's rhema to me, you guys. It's a rhema word to me. It's a rhema word because I've studied, okay? I've investigated and I've, uh, you know, this text says there in 539 St. John, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and as those of you that are going around testifying of me. So it's important for you to understand that it's a rhema word to me. It's a rhema word to me but I'm going to speak it into your atmosphere and it's going to hit your ear as a Logos word, as a Logos word, because you're required to do your own personal investigation of the scriptures because 2 Timothy 2.15 says it, you guys have made it very clear there in that scriptural narrative that says, study to show yourself, okay, approved onto God. So, uh, the subject of the sentence is you. You've got to know the Word of God for yourself. But we're here to assist you. So let's back up and let's find out what our, what our objectives are for today. Um, our lesson for today is rhema, the theology of the rhema word. Um, but we're, we're underscoring depression. Uh, so it's the theology of rhema and depression. is It's really a hot subject. It's a hot point for um, the status, the emotional status of those that are in our society today. You know, we have, uh, we have to be quarantined and now we're being, if you will, uh, locked up in our own homes. There's a stay at home uh, command coming down from our governor here in California. And so with that time, you guys, it's great things. You don't have to sit home and watch, you know, uh, movie channel all day, enroll in school. This is a good time to take advantage of time. And time is sometimes God strategically 
makes available to us so that we could uh, introspect. That's a big fancy psychological term, but introspect means to go on the inside of yourself. First, center yourself, settle down, center yourself. And I'm not trying to be, you know, give you any modern science or Scientology or anything of that sort, but sometimes you need to be quiet, and God sometimes dictates a quiet environment for yourself so you could find out what makes up the Genesis design that is already on the inside of you, okay? When God brought you into this earth, you're loaded with the blueprint of what you're supposed to be doing in this world. And so it's important for you to quiet down, be sober, like the text says, be sober, be vigilant, right? Uh, so in your sobriety, you can hear God. In your sobriety, you could start introspecting, finding out, take a little flashlighter, if you will, and go on the inside of you and discover the greatness and the potential of greatness that lies within you. And it's my role, it is the role of all the five-fold gubernatorial officers, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher. It's our role, you guys, to help you water the seed of your Genesis design. It's, it's, it's our role is, is called to empower you. And empowering you is letting you know what you already possess, all right? And that's, that's why we're here. That's why uh, the master teaching gift is before you now. I'm going to help you to discover what God has already put in you. And we're going to find that out by knowing how to navigate through the scriptures. We're going to find that out by knowing how to navigate through the scriptures. So today we're in Rhema Hermeneutics. Um, and the subscript for Rhema Hermeneutics is the theology of Rhema and depression. Um, we're going to, our objectives today, we're going to kind of reintroduce Rhema. Come on, say it out of your mouth. Rhema is pronounced, yes, it's, it's pronounced Rhema. And uh, it's spelled R-H-E-M-A, Rhema. And the word Rhema means God speaking for a second time. God speaking again, the rhema. It is also the revelation of the word of God. It's also the Holy Ghost uh, enlightening you, right? It's also the Holy Ghost illuminating the scriptures in your life. You say, Dr. McLeod, what is those fancy university terms you're using? Well, illumination is bringing light on the subject, okay? Because sometimes we read out of uh, dim eyes and dim lens, but the Holy Ghost will assist you to see out of a uh, lens that are well lit and the scripture will come up off of the page and all of a sudden there's a eureka of understanding. There is an enlightenment. There is an illumination. You could see now, oh, I understand now. I get it now. And the Holy Ghost is here under the Godmosphere and under this master teaching, anointing, and, and uh, gifting to ensure that you get to that place of rhema. And last time we were together, you guys, we talked about the rhema progression. Talked about the rhema progression. So that's one of our objectives today is to reiterate, review uh, the definition and articulate the rhema. And then after getting clarity on the rhema, we're going to also rehearse in your ear gate today the definition of hermeneutics because those two work hand in glove. But in our progression, you know, I have a, a theology school. Or I want to call it a Bible school first. We're a Bible school before we are a theology school because you guys know sometimes uh, theology is, can be depicted as men throwing God on the operating table and trying to dissect them without the Holy Spirit. So we're, we're not trying to just be a theology school. We're a Bible school. That's why we have a visual of the Bible, okay? And it's, it's tattered and torn, and that's what we're encouraging you to do is to put some mileage on your Bible. You've got to read the Holy Writ. You've got to open the canonicity of the 66 books that bears the seal of divine inspiration, you've got to open it because that's where you get the logos. 
the logos. Say it, you guys, the logos. The logos, L-O-G-O-S, and pronounced logos. The logos is what the Bible contains. When you open up your Bible, ta-da, you have content, you have data, you have information, you have education, you have academia, you have even some philosophy, you have some science, you have letters, you have gospels, you have songs. It contains information. That's the logos, okay? But the logos, you guys, is not the rhema. What did I say? The logos is not the rhema. As a matter of fact, too many of us are living a logos life. We've heard the information about the Bible all my years, Dr. McLeod. I, you can't tell me nothing. I've been in this way a mighty long time, 45 years. I've been, I've been digesting and processing the information in the Bible. Well, friend of mine, the information is not going to get you victory. The information is not going to cause you to deal with the ails of life, with, the, with the, uh, the, um, all of the wiles that the enemy sends your way is going to be the rhema that's going to cause the demons that come to you and say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but you have no credibility in the demonic uh, dimension, all right? So the demons know if you've got Bible cred, credibility. The demons know if you have rhema credibility. And if you have rhema credibility, you are going to speak with a certain air of authority and confidence and, uh, and, and regard to the text, and they're going to respect the words that are coming out of your mouth. So uh, that's why we're on this subject in particular. Uh, Next Dimension University, our mission statement is what, you guys? Stomping out biblical illiteracy globally, right? And we're what? Preparing master teachers for end-time deployment. So our goal is to stomp out biblical illiteracy, but what is the, uh, the answer? You know, we just don't want to identify the problem. What is the answer? The problem is there's a lot of illiteracy in the body of Christ. We're not going to indict anyone in particular, but we'll, let's just say it goes from the clergy to the, co congr to the congregants, okay? Uh, from the pulpit to the pews, all right? So, and those inside the church community and those outside of the church community. And so we need not only to identify the problem, but we need to uh, present and propose, propose the answer. And the answer, you guys, is the rhema word, is the rhema word. Because that's what Jesus said, right? Jesus said right there in Matthew's Gospel 4 and 4, man shall not live. That right there is to be underscored. Man should not live. How do we live? <laughs> man should not live by physical food alone, right? Protein, carbs, and fats, right? And all the extras, right? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live by. Now, it didn't say man shall live by the Bible because the Bible, you know, was compiled after, uh, you know, the death of Jesus. Uh, many years later was the Bible compiled. And that's what the word Bible means. Bible comes from the Greek word biblios. What is it, you guys? Biblios, right? Which means a compilation of books. But, of course, they weren't talking about the Bible when, when, when Jesus stood there, third chapter, Matthew's Gospel, uh, 15, 16 verse, God from heaven, his father said, this is my beloved son, hear him out. He is the president of the world. Hear him out. Listen to his inauguration. And so he stood there, fourth chapter, Matthew's gospel. And the text says in the first verse how the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And then the you know, spirit came uh, and, and tried to entice him. The, the enemy came and tried to entice him. And the fourth verse, the fourth chapter, Matthew, he gave his inauguration statement. He said, he, he didn't say, you know, world peace, you know, goodwill towards men. He didn't say, I'm going to solve all your problems. What he said was the first thing after he was consecrated of God's and after he was 
inaugurated, after he was identified as the, as the savior of the world, the one to listen to, the first thing came out of his mouth was, man, you shall not live by bread alone. You're going to live by the rhema word. Basically, it, it said every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that's what we should be paying attention to. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, you know, we, we have our problems. We got our issues. We, we are having depression. Um, that's one of our objectives here is to clarify depression. You know, we have the conventional definition of depression is to uh, suppress the suppression of your emotions as a result of devastating uh, experiences that you have incurred in your life, and uh, and you suppress uh, those um, you're you're affected and you're impacted by those devastating experiences, and now you are mummified. You you're muted. Your your tongue has cleft to the roof of your mouth, and your your emotions are in disarray and discombobulated, and and uh, you have no sense of purpose. And when you really uh, uh, put it under a microscope, when you put uh, depression under a microscope, you're going to find uh, that depression is the absence of purpose. Depression is the absence of purpose, absence of the life of God. John 10 and 10 put it like this, I am come that you might have zoe. Everybody say it, zoe. The word zoe is the word life. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. One translation says, a sea of life. I remember I was taking a cruise to the Bahamas, and I you know, stood there on, uh, looking up out of the, to the water, and the water was, you know, was for miles and miles and miles, nothing but blue water. And God is saying to us, that's how Jesus wants to bless and uh, overwhelm you with his life. So there's no way you can have Zoe on the inside of you and be depressed. There's no way Zoe and depression say, uh, shares the same uh, habitation. There's no way. So uh, the, I'm just giving you a basic rhema definition for depression is uh, that of absence, absence of purpose and uh, neglecting uh, the call of God that is upon your life. Let me give you a perfect case uh, uh, scripture on it. Proverbs 13 and 12 says, purpose, or the actual text says hope. Uh, that's why we need the prophets. The prophets come to stimulate. They got an anointing to stimulate hope for us. You follow me? That's, that's why when you get a prophetic word from, a, from an authentic prophet, uh, a genuine prophet, a real McCoy prophet, he, he's going to inspire you to want to see tomorrow. OK, but but uh, depression is I don't want to see tomorrow. I could leave here right now. A and purpose comes to say I can't go anywhere because there's a purpose I've got to fulfill. And so I can't go, and, you know, and hide. And, uh, you know, we call it taking a sabbatical, being incognito. Uh, we're shutting down. Uh, we're shutting down all 200 plus emotions. We're shutting, and we're only, you know, giving an uh, underscore to sadness and depression because purpose is being deferred. When you see that text there, that is the uh, hallmark for purpose uh, and is the hallmark for depression in the same verse, Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferred, the word deferred there implied to be postponed, or the Hebrew word implies to drag or to pull, or, or, or to push, or to tow. Purpose should not, you know, it should not be heavy like that. You know, when you're in your grace, grace is 99% God and 1% you. You know, when you, when you see a skater and she's skating gracefully, she's doing her thing, she's in her zone, she's in her element, it looks graceful, it looks like no effort at all. And that's how it's supposed to be when you're in your grace, when you're in your calling, when you're in your purpose. And when you are, uh, when you've embraced your purpose, right, you've embraced your purpose, you've signed on the dotted line, God has co-signed and you have signed, right, that this is why you're here. This is why God have you on planet Earth. This is your reason for being. 
So it doesn't matter if you lose a friend, if you lose a spouse, if you lose the loved one, if life look like it's in total disarray, if the devil's wreaking havoc in your life and it looks as though your life is in a tailspin, it don't matter because purpose will always uh, um, uh, surpass and purpose will always supersede any opposition that comes your way. And so that spirit of depression has got to go because the spirit of depression will hang around those that are like vagabonds in the spirit. They have a spirit of vagabond and they're vagabonds in the spirit. In other words, they're just uh, roaming about without any sense of direction, almost like a dead fish floating around in, in water without any sense of direction. Your, your spiritual and your purpose axis is broken. So you, don't, you can't see your north from your east or your west. You're just getting up and you're just floating around having, with, with no purpose, no direction. So, and, and understand the difference, you guys. There's purpose, which answers the question, why are you here? All right? And there's destiny that answers the question, where am I going? Okay? So you need to be able to get a rhema on purpose, get a rhema on destiny, and you can't get a rhema outside of the Holy Writ. So before you think, you know, well, I think I'm here to become a medical doctor because my mama said, daddy said, and I want to be the first to become a medical doctor, blah, blah, blah. You better dip your cranium in the word of God and let God reveal to you what God's original, what his original plan was for you, not some pseudo purpose. We have a lot of pseudo purpose. Sometimes we spend 20, 30, 40 years in a pseudo purpose. And a pseudo, you know, means false. It's a false purpose something that you have concocted, something that you have come up with, something that you, you know, was dictated to you by mama or daddy or grandmama or granddaddy, some personal aspiration. But your personal aspiration, you guys, is not always your purpose, okay? And I'm telling you again, the reason why we're at home and we're getting depressed, we're at home and we feel abandoned, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to isolate you so that he can just, you know, assault you and that's what's going on without that's depression when you're when your purpose is being assaulted and being battered and it's not always somebody else assaulting and battering your purpose sometimes you assault your own purpose you batter your own purpose and the text says right there Paul was reminding young Timothy don't let anyone insult or assault or undermine your purpose don't let anyone belittle what, I've, what God has put on the inside of you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Don't let, you don't undermine it, and don't you allow anyone else to belittle it. It's right there in the text, you know, 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Don't let anyone, uh, you know, count you less than who you are in purpose. Don't let anyone undermine the gift that God has put on the inside of you. Okay, our time is getting away from us, so let's just kind of uh, digress and reiterate uh, some of our objectives here. One of our main objectives is to help you to understand the rhema, okay? And you understand the rhema by distinguishing it from the logos. So the rhema is God's word come alive to you. And, and, uh, and with, with the assistance of the laws and the principles of hermeneutics, don't get, don't get it, you know, don't, Dr. McLeod, you're getting too deep on me. No, hermeneutics is something you must have. Because the scripture said in, in uh, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're not, the first thing you do, when you get saved, next thing on program, renew your mind. You get saved, next thing on program, renew your mind. You get saved, what do you do? Next thing on program, get your mind renewed. Because it's a mind game. It's a mind game. Re read it for yourself. You know, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, you know, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's a mind game. It's the battle of the mind. And so you've got to download the Word of God inside your spirit. And that's why I got a little upset, you know, when we got rid of the, the, the cassette tapes, you know, because I would listen to a cassette tape four or five years before I, un I get the rhema on it, the integrity of God's word, before I get the rhema walking in the realm of the miraculous, before I get the rhema of the power twins of, of faith and patience, before I get the rhema on the scripture, I got to, I got to chew on it. I got to chew on it according to uh, Joshua, Yeshua 1 and 8, 
It says, this book of Torah shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt haga. Write it down, you guys. H-A-G-A-H. -A haga. H-A-G-A-H. -A -A haga. That means to meditate. That means to reverberate. That means to rehearse it all the day long until maybe month, two, three, four, five months later, it explodes on the inside of you. And you say, oh, now I understand. Now I get it. And that rhema word becomes a practical appliable word for your life because we've been trying to apply the logos it ain't gonna work <laughs> the logos is not going to work it is the rhema word that's going to be applied to the reality of your life because there's a real devil there's real cancer there's real COVID-19 there's real people lying on their beds with the, the, the logos is not going to raise them up is the rhema word that's going to raise them up. Well, my time has gotten away from me. I need to introduce to you real quickly. Tell our folks, Dr. Saucer, that we must register. Register. You can join right now here at Next Dimension University where our students are being formally trained in the word of God by calling 888-206-4344. Again, that number is 888-206-4344. And you can go to our website at nextdimensionuniversity.com. The operators are standing by waiting for your call. Join us in stomping out biblical illiteracy yes, globally. And absolutely. And then, uh, Melinda, let the people know about Supernatural Recall. Raise it up, you guys. Supernatural Recall is the book. You come and join the class. It's a memory class. Come on now. Supernatural Recall is going to teach you how to get hold of your weapon tree. Your sword of the spirit, which yes. is the word of God, so that you might be able to stand against depression with Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Yes. <laughs> well, blessings to all of you. Our time has gotten away from us. Give God a great big hand of applause, you guys. This is Dr. Joel McLeod and stomping out biblical illiteracy with the task force. Until the next occasion, friend of mine, Dr. McLeod and the task force is signing out saying God will bless you. God will keep you as we together continue to strive for the masteries that are in Christ Jesus, our Lord.